um, our guidelines uh, are extremely clear about this, the guidelines that we adopted on Monday, and that um, there should be uh, non-discrimination between uh, nationals and EU citizens uh, who are resident in the relevant member state must be ensured that member state must not deny entry to EU citizens or third country nationals uh, residing on its territory and must of course also facilitate transit of other EU citizens and residents that are, that are residing home. This said, member states uh, can take appropriate measures such as requiring persons entering the territory to undergo self-isolation or other similar measures upon return from uh, an area that is affected by the outbreak provided that they impose the same requirements on their own nationals. Uh, so that is, that is the situation um, that, that we, uh, or, or our position that we uh, exp expressed in our guidelines. And we are working very closely with all um, member states that, um, uh, that have imposed internal border controls in order to uh, make sure that these relevant parts of the guidelines are, uh, are complied with. It is very important that they do so. And um, I can also recall, uh, as regards uh, UK citizens, uh, that they uh, should be treated as EU uh, citizens until the end of the transition period, as you know. Follow-up to this? Yes, please. Oui, on a parlé, je crois, hier, de la situation à la frontière de la Pologne concernant les, les citoyens des pays baltes qui voudraient retourner, qui étaient bloqués. Est-ce qu'il y a une évolution euh, Est-ce que la situation est résolue Merci. Um, yeah. Stéphane, if you feel you have the best information on this at this stage. Merci. Um, thank you. No, I would like to uh, refer to uh, yesterday's uh, video, tr uh, video conference meeting between uh, Commissioner Valley and the transport ministers where they have um, discussed the different situations in the member states and where it was, as um, Eric has explained, an, um, an, uh, a political uh, consensus to indeed uh, tackle the many transport challenges related to the COVID break together and to have uh, more coordination. One of the things that has been discussed and where there is an agreement is that um, uh, there should be indeed green priority lanes um, est established in the, the different uh, member states for the freight transport. And the Commissioner also asked the Member States to consider waiving existing weekend uh, bans. The Commissioner su suggested for these green lanes to use the 10T corridors, which are basically the, uh, the backbone of uh, Europe's transport system. What is maybe important here is that once these, um, now that the Member States are invited to um, work on the establishment of such green lanes, such priority lanes, this obviously has to be done in a very coordinated way. And the Commission therefore proposed a single platform, um, which would be coordinated by the Commission, where all the national measures um, regarding uh, uh, transport and traffic restrictions, for instance, are communicated um, to the Commission, which will be updated then in real time on this single platform. The idea is that with this system, uh, we could help better manage the uh, traffic jams, circulation problems, which may arise in different parts um, of the European Union. Um, there is already at this stage a website with a platform containing information that, receive, that we receive from member states on the state of play of such traffic restrictions. But obviously now we, um, the member states, are committed to indeed designate a person in the, uh, with the national authorities to feed into this uh, platform. Again, trying to make sure that we have, uh, can follow in real time what's going on. Follow-up. Yes, this sounds uh, very nice, but uh, as a matter of fact, member states do not listen to your uh, recommendation, it seems at least. I mean, if you have the Hungarian example, the Polish border issue, I mean, it was not about uh, trucks, it was about citizens, workers returning from Germany back to Baltic states who were, I think, asked to leave their cars and take the train and things like that, uh, incredible stuff so did you do you have any information on that maybe thank you or it wouldn't it be also the more somebody cut you off to call out those who not do not follow the rules that you fixed thank you 
Yeah, I think one of the one of the advantages of this platform that is being established is that we will see immediately which measures are being taken, that we can follow in real time what is happening. That is exactly one of the tools that will help us to hopefully tackle this situation. And I can only stress also that during yesterday's meeting there was this clear political, uh, political commitment, as we understood it, from the member states to uh, go ahead with such a, I would say, a coordinated approach. Indeed, as I have said in this press room um, a few times already, in the situation we are, we are in, we put forward guidelines on what uh, clearly is the best way of moving forward uh, on this matter. Um, but member states uh, have to play their role uh, in implementing them, and they have said that they would implement them, and therefore we are working with them to make sure that, um, that this happens, but clearly um, it is an intensive process uh, that requires many bilateral, uh, bilateral contacts and uh, contacts in the context of the daily um, video conferences of ministers that take place, and this is a process that is, uh, that is, currently, that is currently ongoing.